Hi, uh, this is Haibun Tsai from Washington State University. Uh, greetings to you all. I hope everybody is uh, doing well. And uh, thanks for joining this session. So in this short talk, I'm going to share my thoughts about some of the problems with the Android ecosystem evolution and a potential solution that might address this problem in the future. So the Android uh, is definitely the dominating uh, mobile operating systems in terms of both uh, how so how many mobile devices have been installed on Android and also in terms of uh, the, the number of web page visits, uh, according to the state counter, a leading uh, web traffic analysis site uh, that comes from uh, Android uh, devices. However, we also know that there is another side of the Android dominance that is there are actually much trouble right now with Android. On the security side, for example, numerous and continuously growing defense solutions have uh, become available. Uh, for example, just for Android malware detection, just in uh, 2020 alone, by this date, thousands of papers, thousands of papers have been published on this topic, uh, according to Google Scholar. However, on the other hand, uh, in the in the wild, uh, Android malware is not getting fewer. And regarding app uh, quality, compatibility has really been a tremendous issue in the Android world. Somewhat 40 to 60% of Android apps may not be able to run normally uh, on some kinds of Android uh, devices, according to our recent study published uh, last year. And, and, and we see the main cause is uh, evolution. So the holistic mobile uh, software ecosystem, including the Android runtime, the Android applications and the Android users. So all of these evolve rapidly and holistically as well to accommodate the latest hardware advances and uh, volatile end user uh, requirements. But there is trouble with the evolution because things change in, uh, in a, an, an uncoordinated way. For example, for malware detection, uh, so knowing based approaches basically use features uh, according to the characteristics of one version of the ecosystem. Uh, however, this kind of uh, learning based approach may not be able to work effectively on apps that are actually developed on, on top of the other version of uh, the ecosystem. And uh, here this figure actually shows uh, one of the state of the art malware detectors uh, deteriorating rapidly in terms of the detection accuracy. Uh, you know, when it is applied one to five years uh, after it is being, is, uh, after it's trained. And uh, the compatibility issues also arise when the developers are not aware of the changes in the ecosystem, or even just because the developers are not in sync with the platform changes when they develop apps. And so, but of course, uh, evolution is also the reason that the Android ecosystem uh, keeps its vibrancy. So um, we cannot get rid of it. We have to uh, embrace it. And as one envisioned way towards this goal, we look forward to a solution that addresses the three ecosystem elements. Um, again, the users, the applications, and the platform in a holistic manner, as, you, as shown in this figure. So we basically have two key insights. Uh, the first is that we have to gain understanding of the holistic mobile ecosystem. And the other is that we need a way to automate this process of obtaining this understanding. Uh, moreover, we need a sustainable approach actually that provides the evolutionary understanding of the ecosystem characteristics. And this can be done uh, by continuous ecosystem mining. And following these two insights, we envision a system pro uh, systems approach to obtaining and uh, sustaining a systematic understanding of the evolutionary dynamics of the holistic uh, Android ecosystem. As shown in this overview figure, the overall idea uh, is as follows. The continuous ecosystem mining infrastructure on the top right uh, is dedicated for data collection, uh, storage, and uh, analysis. It offers a high efficiency data processing and, uh, and access for data users, such as the, uh, the characterization uh, analysis and uh, different kinds of uh, applications and the tools built uh, on top of the characterization results. And uh, the systematic evolutionary characterization module um, in, uh, on the right-hand side 
it, it focuses on empirical investigations, uh, addressing key research questions to which the answers uh, would need to knowledge about the ecosystem evolutionary dynamics. And lastly, based on the continuous ex, uh, characterization results, we can then develop an uh, application health profile that provides developers with recommendations towards proactive uh, quality. And also this, uh, sustainable app security class classification with slow performance uh, deterioration. And more specifically, the ecosystem data mining infrastructure provides uh, basic uh, data mining facilities that both extract app behaviors from multiple perspectives and also uh, gather user community data from various sources on the web. And efficient data and the harvesting and storage schemes uh, are built in to facilitate continuous mining so as to enable the collection of ecosystem data of maximum representativeness uh, possible while the ecosystem evolves. And, and uh, with the data collected, we perform systematic ecosystem characterization. And, and this characterization is systematic uh, because it addresses the characteristics of each uh, of these three ecosystem data elements individually but also uh, the interactions, for example, through correlation analysis among those elements. For example, the app characterization uh, part uh, will capture app behaviors in three orthogonal dimensions, including the composition and functionality distribution of an app and uh, its executions, and the inter-component communication uh, within single apps and across multiple apps. And, and also some sensitive data access, including the production, consumption, and uh, potential leakage of sensitive data uh, in and up and its applications. And for, for another example, the user community char uh, characterization uh, examines the data, uh, the Android user community dynamics in two dimensions. One is the end user dynamics regarding uh, the change pattern with respect to users' uh, usage statistics, such as the number of downloads of user apps in different functionality categories and uh, different platform versions, and distributions of any user de demographics. And the other one is uh, developer dynamics, uh, concerns, uh, which concerns how developers' characteristics change over time through the distribution of developer demographics in relation to app functionality categories and developer productivity data, and uh, developer trustworthiness and the reputation uh, according to the uh, security and uh, uh, quality di distribution of the apps developed by the, the, uh, the developers uh, using data like uh, use end user ratings and the reviews. And importantly, we study also the interplay among these three ecosystem data elements through in-depth co-evolution study uh, studying, for example, the safest mechanism for declaring and requesting permissions uh, during an app installation and the, and the runtime. And we also developed two practical applications and tools by immediately utilizing the diverse ecosystem characteristics. For example, we develop a comprehensive semantic model for uh, app Android apps uh, called Android uh, App uh, Health Profile to describe various quality indexes uh, about indices about an app, uh, along with a tool for constructing this profile. And this health profile provides a central reference for app developers to understand potential uh, quality issues of an app being developed, uh, so as to guide developers to achieve high app quality in a proactive manner. And uh, so we have developed a toolkit uh, for systematic app characterization. Uh, using this toolkit, we sampled at least a thousand benign apps and malware from each of the eight past years and characterized the behavior evolution in terms of the proposed structure metrics on code layer interaction. Among other observations, we can see that this figure shows um, that both, both benign and apps and malware had a decreasing costs within user code and an increasing costs within the SDK. And uh, the other general observation is the evolution of malware seems to be uh, much less, uh, seems to be much less predictable uh, than that of uh, the benign apps. And these kind of results uh, have immediate app implications for app security. Uh, for instance, the steady drop in the user involvement in app executions indicates the promise of uh, 
pro uh, 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 prioritizing user code in app testing and security defense, assuming the framework itself is secure and less defective. And uh, so with that, uh, I would like to wrap up my talk here. I, I look forward to uh, answering any questions you may have in our following Q&A and discussion sessions. Thank you all for your time and attention.